ESET head office in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, with Raf Bivar. Raf. Yeah. Hey, how are you, man? Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm very well, thanks. Uh, can you tell the folks who are watching a little bit about what you do here at ESET headquarters? So, Robbie, I am actually the sales engineer. Uh, I am the lead sales engineer for the for the ESET team in Canada, and I am mostly the tech guy that will support sales uh, in general mm -hmm. uh, within the Canadian territory. So, a very technical mind. Uh, and yes. Very familiar with the inner <laughs> yeah. workings of the products. Yep, I'm the one that has all the geeky talk with the other techs and with the customers. Yeah. Uh, and and the the main driver for that is to be able to technically position the products and see if we can address all the customer requirements. Sure. So part of that comes from uh, educating end users to understand what the cybersecurity threat landscape looks like. Absolutely. Yeah. And we've really, really seen that change over the past couple of years. I think especially, was it 2017 when WannaCry dropped? Uh, so yes. So this is like the yep. first ransomware that really made its way around yep. the world and, and was really, really huge. How did that impact the direction of a company and like ESET? We should not see any any numbers going down whenever it comes to the ransomware. It's still the, the really prevalent. Sure. And, and, and everybody in a way is kind of experiencing it. Uh, we do have a pretty good protection against it. So I, I, I don't expect my existing customers that are running updated products and everything mm -hmm. uh, from being impacted to those threats. Mm -hmm. But it's something that's already very, very uh, live, very, very present in our day-to-day -day operations. Um, something else that I that I usually highlight uh, on the on the threat landscape that we have uh, recently is the upcoming releases of the fileless malwares. So if oh. you, if if you have, for example, uh, an endpoint security product that's running on your computer, either an AV anti malware or or whichever name you you prefer to call it. Yeah. Um, I still have uh, the need to scan files. So, however, the idea of a fileless malware is there's no files. Okay. So how do you scan something if it's it's not available on your computer? So those those malwares are in general being uh, running by script on rogue web pages, malicious web pages. Right. And the most common one today is probably the coin miners. So it's a script that will run on a given computer, and that computer will start mining bitcoins mm. for the for the malwares. So you call it these <clears throat> fileless malware. So it, does that mean that it just loads right into RAM from a website? Yes, it will actually be it. It will be a script that will be running in memory uh, whenever you, you go to those websites. Mm -hmm. And if your existing endpoint security product cannot scan or cannot protect your memory in real time, yep. you will be susceptible to, to that kind of threat in general. So it sounds to me like another, like WannaCry as the first kind of example of ransomware. Yeah. Another threat where basic, like, Antivirus. I'm yep, going to use the absolutely. term antivirus because yep. you hear uh, anti-malware is a term that we in the industry use these yep. days because really it's not just viruses that yep. we're dealing with That's threats correct. anymore. So, so is antivirus is it sufficient anymore? I don't. I don't believe antivirus has been sufficient for a long time. So not only we have the viruses out there, yeah. uh, we have those fileless malwares. We have the crypto. Uh, actors in general, the ransomwares. Mm -hmm. We have Trojans, we have backdoors, we have exploits. So in general, is antivirus enough? No. Is it better than not having anything? Yes. Sure. But if you have the option, and yes, you do have the options. Sometimes you're talking about $1 more expensive or something like that. Right. You can go to a full suite of, of an endpoint security product, mm -hmm. which will provide you a much better uh, protection, overall protection on your computer. Right. Okay, so I don't want to, I don't want to give the impression that this is a sales pitch that we're trying to say, you know, choose ESET endpoint protection mm -hmm. advanced because it's a sales pitch. I, I want to <laughs> instead kind of what what features of a product like endpoint protection advanced is mm -hmm. it that are taking protection to the next level for those users? So fileless attacks, yep, ransomware attacks, like these are threats that can take businesses and put them out of business yep, yep. The, and, and bankrupt their owners. Yeah, absolutely. Like that's the the risk threats, is insane. Yeah. yeah. So what, what 
features so, are those more advanced? Why do I need to pay more, essentially? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, specifically to ESET, the modules that we add those more advanced features is called HIPS, which stands for Host Intrusion Prevention System. Okay. And that's where we have the advanced memory scanner, which is basically protecting your memory in real time. The fileless And, and that's attacks? mostly associated to the fileless mm -hmm. malware. Uh, we have the exploit blockers. So let's say whenever a new company releases a publicly available exploit for a vulnerability. Let's say this week we actually had a pretty severe vulnerability with Microsoft yes. and they actually released a patch the next day or something like that. Uh, we will prevent that vulnerability from being exploited. We are this not is exactly what ESET accomplished with WannaCry. E absolutely, it was, yes. It was yes. E eternal it was, blue. It was, yep, it was the Samba vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, we were able to actually prevent that vulnerability from being exploited in the first place. So, so even though WannaCry had never been discovered before, yep. ESET was already proactively protecting absolutely. its users. Absolutely. And so we were, were actually talking. providing that kind of uh, fix two weeks before WannaCry actually existed. Fantastic. So we had that kind of preventive yep. maintenance, let's say, yeah. on, our, on our product. And you want an anti malware product that is going to be proactive instead of reactive. Absolutely, yes. Because in, in the case of something like ransomware, you can lose everything. Yep, yep. And so there is no reactive response to that other yep. than, I hope your backups are good. Yes, and, and actually, uh, going back to that initial question about yeah. the, the current threat landscape, you are seeing the still you are seeing a really prevalent uh, presence of the ransomware. However, now the the, the crypto actors in this in this general, they are not only encrypting your data and holding you for a ransom, but if you're not paying, they are actually releasing the data and selling that data. Oh, so it so can it be even data worse. Theft yes, as well, that can okay. be even worse. Yeah, so. Wow, <laughs> yeah, that's scary stuff. Uh, so what else does uh, does your product? So again, to to just look at why, I, I get the question all the time, Raf. Yep. Why should I buy the greater product when the antivirus has been working so well for me for so long? So as you said, it might be a couple bucks more, or a dollar yep. or so more per seat, which can be a lot if you've got ten thousand computers. But in a yep. in a small medium business, it's not that much. Why would I pay more? The additional features that we have in the full endpoint security solution uh, from a technical perspective, and mm -hmm. again, I'm talking about one yeah. or two dollars more, yeah. uh, is well worth it. The value is actually there. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking of uh, not only adding additional layers of protection to your computer, mm -hmm. either at home or, or, or at your business, okay. uh, but I'm also getting additional visibility on what's happening on your environment as well. So let's say, one of the features on that new, uh, on, on that bigger product, let's say the endpoint security, mm -hmm. is a personal firewall, which will potentially replace your Windows firewall in right. your computer. And not only it will allow you to actually have uh, visibility on the network layer, so instead of only looking for viruses or Trojans or ransomware, yeah, yeah. I'm also looking for duplicate IP address. I'm looking for DNS poisoning. I'm That's interesting that you poisoning. state that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, so ne po possibly network traffic problems are even Absolutely, shown. Absolutely, yes. Which are not necessarily uh, uh, security incidents, but yeah. it can be an actual threat. So for example, one of the, the detections that we have is a port scanning. So maybe right. your user is, is, or a given actor in, inside your network is scanning uh, your servers for yeah. whatever reason, whereas they are not supposed to be doing that. So mm -hmm. yeah, it gives you that visibility so you can actually go to the user and have a conversation and see what's, what's going on. Yeah, I've never really thought about that as a threat. Yeah. Because like a, a duplicate IP address, you just think, oh, well, I accidentally assigned yep. the same IP to a printer yep. or something. But what if it's a threat actor? Exactly, yeah. Maybe someone is spoofing spoof. that, yeah. that IP address, yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, you mentioned about the firewall. How? And, and I don't want to put you too much on the spot, but Absolutely. I mean, Microsoft Windows 10 comes with a firewall. Yep. So do I really need to supplement my anti-malware with a firewall for MISA? We do see uh, two main approaches for, for uh, that replacement, let's say. Mm -hmm. So the first one is ease of use. So we do provide a management console that will allow you to have a much more user-friendly configuration and deployment of that, that specific Are feature. Are we talking centralized management? Absolutely, so, yes. Okay, so all 10,000 of my computers? Yeah, absolutely. Everything all in the same place. five of my computers? You just create the place. policies and ah. you push it out to your computers. Yeah. Okay. It's, again, it's fully automated, so it's, it's pretty convenient to use. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second main reason is the visibility. So you do have access to a lot of reporting that's actually coming from the, man, the, the actual firewall component. 
let's say you can get a list of all the users on your network that had a port scanner on your environment on a given okay. time frame. Yeah. So that's the kind of awareness and the kind of visibility that some other uh, vendors will not allow you to have. Mm. Great. So looking at now, here we are, it's 2020, yep. Yep. Q1 2020, being that we're here at ESAT headquarters, what kind of threats are we preparing for in this new year? Is, is there an evolution, like in 2017, we really saw an evolution from viruses to yep. ransomware, and things are continuing to progress. Yep. You mentioned fileless attacks. What else are we so looking So thank for? you for, for actually uh, uh, touching base on that one. And I will actually look at the camera and say, everybody, we have the the, the malwares or the, the, the actual evil players uh, in the industry. Every single day they are going better and better and better. So it's not only important to renew your license. It's imperative that you guys actually keep your set products or any other product that you might have today as updated as possible. So you have the evolution of the ransomware, you have the evolution of the file as a malware. If you are running your antivirus or your anti-malware product from three years ago, you might be losing some adven advanced features in there. Mm. So you might be actually lagging behind and sometime they will eventually win over your computer and you might experience some, some loss or some incidents in general. So it's really important as a vendor, to be as updated as possible. Whenever we release a new, a, new feature, a new feature or a new version of the product, it's important that you actually try to be as updated as possible. Work with your vendor, work with your partner, work with your IT department, so, so you, you are well protected. Um, we are seeing, um, coming back to your question, mm -hmm. we are seeing a lot of, of the, the movements in general uh, whenever we are looking at the, the data. So we are seeing a lot of uh, the new threats coming from two main um, avenues, let's say. Uh, so the first one is hardware. So whenever thinking of firmware, for example, you have a BIOS update, you have a new chipset on your computer. Yes, it's actually possible to infect or to, to, to infect that, that given uh, component on your computer. Wow. Um, another point that we have, and we actually have a lot of research going on on that specific one, is the user behavior. So let's say that usually when you think user behavior, probably the biggest example is credit card uh, company. So mm -hmm. you have your credit card in Canada, that credit card has been used in somewhere in Asia, and hey, uh, even though online shopping is available everywhere, it might create a trigger. Hey, it's not, that, that card mm -hmm. is not supposed to be used in, in Asia, for example, in Europe or anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, and we are started to see some, some, some efforts uh, from different vendors, actually, to try to correlate all the incidents or all the, 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 the incidents in general, the security incidents that we flag. Uh, and we also try to map that to the actual user behavior. So, hey, okay. that user has just had his email access in Canada being accessed in Europe. Maybe that's a user that's always traveling. So, yeah, it's kind of expected. Maybe not. That user is an internal user. He has no reason to mm. have that kind of uh, exposure in there. So, we can actually create a ticket and we can flag that as, as a potential uh, incident. So, mm -hmm. your admins can, can take a look at that. Interesting. And we can do that. So this is not as a third party service, but as an in, internal absolutely, service that yes, our absolutely. IT department yep. and, is and, administering. And again, the, the amount of data that's coming out of those services uh, is, is, is so big that automation is, is critical for that. That's so great. we do have a lot of automation capabilities in our products. Yeah. Um, and again, it's everything to make your life easier. And I've, I've never really thought of it outside the context of the credit card. Like it's yep. a perfect example. Yep. If I've used it, and you see it sometimes where it's, it's an inconvenience, but if your credit card ever was stolen and used maliciously, yep. then you want to know about it. And yep. here's a service that you're offering and evolving in 2020 that yep. is in-house. So yeah, I, absolutely, have, yeah. I have control over that data. Yeah. So staff. you're thinking of your credit card, what if it's yeah. your email access or maybe your SIM number, mm -hmm. uh, public data basically. It, it's private, it should be private and we are trying to make it remain private. So is that the evolution of malware do you think is targeting data? Uh, yeah, I would say so. Uh, I, I still don't see specific 
um, data to, to confirm that that affirmation yeah. but I do believe that's that's something that's going to happen we are having we are we as, as, as citizens we are actually uh, producing more data every single day the amount of data that we have associated to our profiles uh, is massive either from financial data healthcare data uh, social networking data work data basically so we should see uh, more uh, custom attacks targeting specific users on specific organizations interesting so well raf it's been a pleasure having you here we've learned Thanks a for lot having me, man. i don't want to overwhelm the viewers um Grand scheme of things, I mean, 2020 is going to be an interesting year, I think, from the cybersecurity landscape. Absolutely. Are we still seeing attacks in the ransomware end of things? Are we still, yes. even though ESET customers are generally uh, protected against that? Yes, there's still a lot of ransomware going on. Uh, I don't see that going down, mm -hmm. not, 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 not in the near future at least. Uh, it, it's, it's still evolving and the, the, the actual uh, organizations, they're actually organizations on the back end uh, that are running with those ransomwares, they are still making a profit. That's the so, thing, yeah. So, yeah. The question for years when it was just viruses on the landscape, yep. the question was always, what's the motivation of a hacker yep. to do this? Yep. And you say, well, money. Yep. Because they make money. Ransomware is a perfect yep. example yep. where it's like, well, they're bringing in a ton of money in order to create malware. Yep. yep. Which, you know, if that's a scary thing. So, thank you for working to combat that. Thanks, man. Big thanks to Raf Bavar and the entire team at ESET Canada for hosting me for the day. Learn more about the protections that we discussed here by visiting endpointsecurity.ca and you'll find more free educational content to help keep you and your staff safe from the modern threats we face in 2020. For endpointsecurity.ca from Positive eSolutions and broadcasting from ESET Canada in the heart of downtown Toronto, I'm Robbie Ferguson. See you next time.